and gentlemen, I present to some and introduce to others, Miss Jasmine Guy. Gilbert and Dwayne Wayne. <laughs> so I have to tell you, because this happened, I, I accepted this, this uh, speaking engagement before I knew that I was going to be flying to LA this weekend to do a show called Unsung Hollywood. Y'all know Unsung until yeah. one? Well, that deals with the singers and the bands, and this song, this show is going to be about actors and shows and and they're doing an episode on a different world. And I hadn't seen everybody all together in like 15 years, you know? So it was me and Kadeem and uh, Charlie, we call Charlie, Charnel Brown, and, and uh, Cree plays Freddie, and Glenn Turman, I mean, Daryl Bell. It was crazy. We were so excited to see each other that Everybody was talking over each other and, you know, and started crying and I thought, oh my God, I love these people so much. Why haven't we gotten together, you know, before this show put us together? And a lot of it is, you know, get a little older, your life happens, get married, you have kids, and then your life is ruined. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, in, staying in touch with each other one-on-one -on -one we did, but we didn't all come together, and there was nothing like the energy of bringing us all together, because all of us together made that show. You know, we didn't write our own lines, we didn't make our own <laughs> stories up, we didn't, you know, we didn't buy our own clothes. We just went to work, we pulled it together, and we created this, this uh, different world, this other place, you know. And because of the brilliance of Bill Cosby, he said it on this HBCU campus. And um, again, I was young, I didn't realize that that was such a big deal either until I got older. And some of why I didn't understand uh, the significance was because I grew up across the street from Morehouse College. And my dad taught at Morehouse. All my family went to Morehouse and Spelman. I was on the campus every day. I thought I went to Morehouse, you know. <laughs> And it realized that there were people that didn't know about not only black colleges, but a lot of people that didn't think that going to college was in their, in their path until they saw that show. Because maybe they didn't grow up with a family that went to college, or maybe in their neighborhoods their friends weren't going to college. And so for that one thing, I'm very grateful for the show because even though it was funny, it let you know that you could be like one of those people on that show, you know. And thank God we had a lot of people, of the, a diverse cast of black folk, because that's another thing, you know, we're not one monolithic group of people. We don't all think the same way and talk the same way and do the same things, you know. And I feel like sometimes when I'm doing a job, I'm the only black person or person of color on the, on the job, then it, I don't have the freedom that I need to do the character that I want to play, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. For example, Whitley said a lot of things that I would not be caught dead saying. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I would go, I remember we did the apartheid show, and it was about divesting from South Africa, and um, it was a fake, uh, soft drink company, but it, it was like Coca-Cola kind of company that was giving scholarships. 
and Kimberly Reese, who's going to be a doctor, was saying she didn't want to take the scholarship because she wanted the company to divest from South Africa. And Whitley says, but why? We don't even know those people. <laughs> and I looked at Debbie Allen like, for real? I gotta say this? I mean, you know, but I knew that Whitley could say that because somebody on the show is going to say the right thing. You know, and if, if you don't have that counter argument, then it may be a little different, you know. But because we would take on political issues on the show, somebody was going to have to do those lines. You know, when, when Whitley goes shopping and, you know, she parks in the handicap and they look at her like, oh, you know. And she says, well, why should I be punished? Because I can walk. <laughs> Every time I park in a handicap, I think of that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but that's where the fun came from, because we could do whatever we wanted. You know, if we went too far, we'd get pulled back. But there was a freedom on that show as a place of working from, a, from an actor's point of view that I have not experienced, well, you know, maybe two or three times since then. When, you, when Debbie just said, you go, like, go all the way. And then if it's too much, we'll pull you back. Usually, you can't even get off, a, off script, meaning you can't improvise or you can't suggest something as an actor. I mean, a lot of actors are basically, uh, we're just, um, I don't want to say puppets, but Really, the most of what we do, the best of us, the creative part of what we do, how we can morph into being somebody else and out, sometimes is stumped. It's, 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 it's put down because the director wants it a certain way and the writer wants it a certain way, and so you don't have that, that freedom to interpret which is really what an artist does the best. We interpret, you give me something and then I'm supposed to elevate we're supposed to bring it up, you know. I think that this show um, was it, it was full of love on the set. We had so much fun off off camera that I don't really remember a lot of the actual episodes. I just remember, oh, that was the day we did this off off camera. We had a lot of fun together. And if you notice, um, some of you might might be a little younger than me, a little older, but you might remember school days. I heard y'all doing the butt when I was walking in, so I was like, okay, school days still lives. Um, but that was, that job I got before A Different World. It came, the movie came out after A Different World, but I really got it before, and I knew Spike Lee from uh, Atlanta, he went to Morehouse, and I was dancing in New York, and he, he would come by Alvin Ailey every now and then. I think he was dating one of the dancers. And he said, um, I'm doing a movie. I need your number. Don't mess up. And I was like, whatever, Spike. How can you be doing a movie? Who are you? <laughs> he had done She's Gotta Have It, and this was his second movie. Now, when someone looks at you now and says, I'm going to be a filmmaker when I grow up, you know what that means. I didn't know what that meant when he said it to me when I was 16. I'm going to be a filmmaker. And he did, as we know, become a filmmaker. So he gets this, this cast together of gammas and wannabes and jigaboos and, you know. And a lot of us had not been in a movie before. You know, it wasn't like... We weren't working, but there weren't a lot of movies for us to be in, if you exactly. understand what I'm saying. So he puts us in these two hotels uh, in Atlanta, and he separates the Jigaboos from the wannabes. The wannabes were in the Regency Suites, and the Jigaboos were in the Ramada Inn. <laughs> so right away, I'm getting very angry. Because I'm like, I can play her, I ain't got to live her, right? <laughs> Well, if I get a role as a crack hoe, when I got to go on the street and practice, I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. 
that's what pretend means. That's what, you know, imagination is about. So that experience, you know, prior to A Different World was amazing too, because we had never, most of us had never done a movie, but we had to be able to <coughs> dance and sing and act to be in that movie, right? And only theater, theater gypsies could do that. You know, I went to L.A. and we had our auditions and they said you have to do a comedic monologue, a dramatic monologue, sing a song, a cappella, and tomorrow you have a dance um, audition, four-hour dance audition. Well, the actors were freaking out because they couldn't dance and the dancers were freaking out because they couldn't wear gypsies that I had been working with for eight years and the Wiz and Bubbling Brown Sugar and Alvin Ailey and Fame and we were the ones that came in there and swooped up them roles. And we learned how to, to do it, you know, deal with the camera or whatever. But if you notice, the different world had a lot of school days people in it. If you look at it over the six seasons that we had, uh, well, first of all, me and Kadeem and Daryl were all in school days. And then as, as the years go by, you'll see other people from school days that did guest roles on the different world. And that is because our casting director from school days was recommending us for a different world. I'm just telling you these stories because it looks like everything's easy or um, that we're just getting things because we're good. And it's not always just that. It's just like life. It's just sometimes timing and sometimes relationships. It's sometimes one job gets you another job. One stupid job can get you another job. I've done some stupid jobs. I've sold Cadillac cars. I've danced around Cadillac cars. I was like, I hate this. You know, then that choreographer is uh, directing a video and he remembers me from the Cadillac commercial. So, you know, for, for those of us that know that life connects eventually and it can be very um, cyclical, for, for those of us that, that get that already, I just want to pass that on to our young people. That you're already planting the seeds of your life where you are. You know, the, the relationships that we have, these people from a different world, I love them. They, they're like, they're my family. You know, I did, we did grow up together. We were not, none of us were from LA. We all go to LA. We don't have any relations to the city, but we had each other. And now I'm 52 and they're still my friends, you know. Now I look at them, I want everybody to be, to do well, you know. Now, now at this age when I see people, I just pray they're okay. Because I know at any given moment, we could not be okay. And when I, when I talk to them over breakfast, right before we all got on the plane, and you know, the peace I felt knowing that everybody was okay. Well, what happened over those years, we weren't always okay. And what we did was we didn't call nobody. I didn't call them when I was sinking. They didn't call me when they were sinking. It, it's something about um, pain and loss. And, you know, when you're not doing well, when you don't want to reach out. You, the, the, the last thing you want to do is tell somebody how bad you're doing. And we all did that over the years, some, somewhere along the way. It was amazing to me. I was like, I didn't know you were going through that. And you, when did this happen? And when you're looking at this, this pattern, and I, so I also, I also wanted to leave you with the thought that um, it was only my ego that told me not to call somebody when I wasn't doing well. It was only my pride that didn't want other people to know you know, I'm in a bad marriage, or I can't, I can't get out of this situation, and I don't, really, I don't know how to do it. And how did I get here? I always wondered, how did I get here? I should have known better. Always, always think I should have known better. I had people around me that taught me better. I had friends ahead of me that did things that I said, okay, I got to be sure not to do that, and I still did those things anyway. And so when I hear, you know, that Kadeem had a, had a, a bad situation or Charlie did, or, and then we were all back up on our feet, I just thank God. 
And I, you know, I just want to remind you, call somebody. It's okay. You know, I have a 15-year-old, and she's gotten this, you know, if I don't, if I don't make an A, then um, forget it, or I don't think I'm going to make an A. I say, if you don't make an A, you make a B. If you make a B, you make a C. What is this absolute, I gotta roll out the bed and be 100%. First of all, you can't be 100% if you ain't doing the work. You know why people think they're supposed to be great right out the bat? You know, you strive to be great, and then you are as great as you can be, right? Or else you're defeating yourself before you even wake up that day. I can't be perfect, so I just ain't gonna do it. <laughs> Am I ringing a bell? Is anybody else on that? I don't want to curse, but that's cool. <laughs> you know, uh, my daughter's got a, a beautiful body. She could have been a dancer or a gymnast or a track star. God just gave her that, hooked her up like that, right? But she ain't doing none of it if she don't want to and if she don't work for it. What makes you think I rolled out the bed, got a movie and an album and a book deal? <laughs> so nobody did, nobody asked me this tonight, but I'm gonna leave y'all with this one little thing, a little pet peeve. When people, especially grown ass people, come up and ask me, how I'm gonna be an actor? I wanna be an actor. <laughs> and I say, so what if you what if, were you doing to to be an actor? I don't know what what, what, what I need to do. <laughs> no, man, this is a below zero thing. Like I can help you at zero, but you below zero. <laughs> you grown. You don't know even what you haven't taken a, an acting class. You can't talk. Um, <laughs> You know, and, and then the other thing is, this, this is not a hobby. It's not my hobby. So don't step to me like I'm macrame in the back of the church. You know, this is how I provide for myself and my kid. This is what I've worked on all my life for everything I do. I never take it for granted. And I have worked with greatness. So I've seen it. I know what it looks like, and I like to be around it. And it looks like it's hard work. Okay? But I love it. Okay? So I do anything. It's like, like a, a man you just can't get enough of. Okay? I'll do anything for you. Need your, you need your drawers clean? You hungry? That's how I feel about my work. It's kind of one. It's all one thing. You know? So, when you want to do something, find out how to do it. Amen. If I met, if, you know, when I met Debbie Allen for the first time, don't think I, I stepped to her with some stupid question. I had a question, but it wasn't stupid. You know, so you're going to meet me. You know, we just had catfish and grits or whatever, and on my way out, you're going to go, how I going to be an actor? <laughs> Nobody did that to me tonight, so I'm not going to do that. Nobody did that. When you meet somebody and you have that one little second moment with that person, make it good. Or just say hi. But just, if you really, and if you want something, find out how to get there. Y'all don't have no excuse now not to know how to get somewhere with everything right at your fingertips, right? It also makes it more difficult because now everybody has the same information, you know? So the, the, that's what I want to leave my young people. Don't let perfectionism keep you from trying and keep you from being good. It's a cop out. Nobody said you're going to be perfect. Nobody's asking you to be perfect. It's just a way of saying, well, I can't be perfect, so I'm not going to try. The other thing is follow your love and your passion. <coughs> I really can't do anything else. I can't do anything other than what I do. And I believe me, I have thought about, oh, I need another career. Because this career is beating me up, you know? But this is what I do. This is, this is it. And because I love it, I can sustain it. 
you know. So try and find something you love along the way. You may not know now. It's okay, you don't have to know tomorrow. Spike Lee didn't go to Morehouse as a filmmaker. He left wanting to be a filmmaker. But he said he really didn't know what he was going to do till his junior year. He was just floating around. He said he was an average student. He didn't even, you know, and then he found his passion along the way. And there were not a lot of filmmakers that were young and black when Spike Lee was coming up, okay? So, so it's okay if that, that seed is planted in, un, in virgin soil. You're, it's okay if you don't see anybody that's kind of like you doing what you want to do, okay? And just know that all the love that I've gotten in my life, I mean, I had no idea this show 25 years later would be still relevant and popular. And I have to tell you, I'm so, so grateful that you even want to still hear about it or see me. Okay? <laughs> so God bless you. And y'all have a good night!